Yeah! Look at her. Oh, there they are. Look at them. Uh, Erica and Adam, they're turning purple. Melissa, be fierce. She's looking. Look at her. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Look at her. The A Queen After Show, where our super celebrity guest looks at some of the queens she's played with, slayed with, or even laid with, and spills a little tea. This tea is fierce. Melissa be fierce, of course. Or throws a little shade. She was on Dragula, honey. She knows how to if she has to. Or most importantly, just tells us something that we don't know. Today's guest is the totally fierce Melissa B. Fierce. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello, honey. Hi, baby. We had a great time already here with you. Sure did. So much fun. If you want to hear all the secrets of that Dragula reunion look that you were wondering about, or find out the details on Melissa's engagement and OnlyFans, well, honey, you're going to have to go back to the main show. Because <laughs> this show is all about you spilling tea on your sisters. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm with two people who are quickly trying to get ready in their shot. One is Miss Erica Zora Aviant. Ta-da! I'm here. And the other, Adam Ita <laughs> Josefita. Wearing purple in honor of your podcast, Turning Purple. Turning Purple. <laughs> A delightful listen, one of my favorite podcasts. You can also hear Adam and Erica on my podcast, Gayest of All Time. Look for it on iTunes or wherever you get podcasts. Now, Melissa, you've survived the Last Supper on Dracula. You survived the Jerry Springer-esque reunion <laughs> of Dracula on uh, Hey Queen TV, yeah. and now you'll make it through. Look at her. <laughs> right, she's crossing herself. Uh, all right, well, let's just get to it. You know how to play the game, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let us begin. Look at her. Oh, my goodness. I was going to say, who is she? Sochi Mochi. Uh, um, <laughs> I think she's still a little butthurt because of what happened with when I punched her. So Right. <laughs> and I, I, I know for a fact that because uh, one time I was driving down the street and I saw her and I pulled up next to her, rolled my window down, and I said, hey, she said, and she rolled her window back up. I said, all right, bitch, I got you. Ooh, Better. snap. <laughs> now, for those of you not in the know, first of all, you got to go back and watch your regular season one on Hey Queen, but you guys did, um, you were in the elimination round and you had to do a mud wrestling mm -hmm. challenge. And you told us on the main show that you were not playing around. I sure wasn't, girl. <laughs> right. Mm. You were ready to fight. I and sure you were going to do whatever it took. To close out and everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so, okay, I guess that's that. There's really no relationship right now with Oji Mochi. Okay, uh, let's move along then. <laughs> Look at her. Frankie Doom. Uh, she cool. Um, I'm glad she got on that new episode of Dracula. It was a pretty fun uh, episode to watch. It was only a two-hour show, but yeah, it was cute. I'm glad I, I didn't get on it because I, either I get on Dracula or I get on All Stars, either one. Right, <laughs> right. Because uh, yeah, I, when I saw it, I was surprised that you weren't part of that. I was surprised too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute. Wait a damn minute. I didn't get the call. Now, Frankie Doom was also a finalist with you. What yes. was your take on their version of the competition and how they did? On the new one? Well, no, on, the, on, your, on your season. Um, I felt that how, the way they, they, all her friends kind of like pumped her up. Mm. I, they, I thought she was going to deliver a better, better finale, but I think she was okay. She was whatever. Oh, okay. I think mines were better. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> have you gotten a chance to reconnect with Frankie Doom uh, have, since the show? I have not. I, I've seen her a couple of times, but we party in different, different, different cities, cities, clubs. We, 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 don't, we don't really work as much like that. Mm, and honestly, you don't need to see any other queens because you have so many queens in your own Be Fierce family. I sure do. Can you, Mother Be Fierce, name for us all 
of <laughs> your <laughs> children. Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, do it. Uh, Maya, Aubrey, Delilah, um, Janessa, Electra, Nomi, uh, Carmen. Did I say Delilah already? Yes. Yeah? It's Sarika, um, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> See, I don't even remember that. <laughs> uh, what does it take to be a good drag mother? Um, it takes a lot of responsibility to make sure you stay, keep the family united. Because having so many personalities in one group, it's a lot. Uh, especially because everyone wants to always hang out with me, and they're like, oh, Melissa, let's hang out. And if I don't hang out with one, the other one gets mad. So mm. I kind of have to equal like my time with everyone. Yeah. It's hard, girl. Yes. It's hard. And they're, have you, kids. they have your <laughs> name, so you yeah. have to make sure they look good. Yeah, always. You're doing it right. Always. I always have to make sure they always look good. Um, I always make sure they're always like, like, on, uh, like on, on their A game all the time. From head to toe, you know they're representing my name, so I gotta yeah. make sure they always look the best. Now, Bacon, back in the main show, we did talk about your childhood and your growing up. Did you create this large drag family because uh, you know you you were there were times in your life where you had to you didn't feel like you could be your full self with your real family? Yes, definitely. I that's one of the reasons. That's the main reason why I did my family because I. You know, in the gay family, you create your own family. You you bond with who, who you want to call your family, your sisters, your brothers. And I think that's why I, I have my be fears because it's some people that I, I can run to for, you know, for them for comfort whenever I need something. Uh, whenever they need something, you can always come to me as well or to any one of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing, a drag family. Yeah, it is. It is. Our chosen families are some of our most important ones as mm -hmm. queer people, for yes, sure. That's for sure, 100%. Yes. All right, let's continue. Look at her. Oh, Bitch Puddin', season two, Dragula winner. Uh, she cool. She actually booked me recently for her digital drag show. And um, it, it, it was, I was surprised she didn't ask me way before. Mm -hmm. I was like, when she reached out, I was like, oh, okay, I'll do it. She originally reached out to me too. And um, she shares some of my stuff on her Instagram too. So she gives me props for what I do and I give her props for what she does. What was your opinion uh, after living through Dragula season one? How did you, what did you think of season two? Uh, actually, I, I, the girls already kind of went in knowing what to do. We, we, we were just thrown out there like, here you go, figure it out, you know? And I feel like season two, they already knew what to prepare for. They already know what they expected, what they wanted. Yeah. Versus us, we were like, okay, test the waters, girl. Keep going, just go. Yeah, you guys were making it up as you went along, yeah. along with the Boulay brothers. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. the people, the girls who came in for season two at least had an idea of what it was mm -hmm. going to be. You guys were shocked and surprised every single day. Every time. Every time they would give us a challenge, we're like, you got to do this. We're like, huh? But how? What do you want? What do you want us to do? Right. So season two, they already kind of knew what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you think of the digital drag phenomenon? I mean, Bitch put in with that, with her digital drag show, really sort of personified that moment. How did you, how have you enjoyed digital drag in the quarantine? Uh, it's been, uh, I tried it for like a month and a half and I got over it. Uh, it's just not the same. It's, you don't get the same uh, energy you get from when you go uh, do a live show. You know, you open the curtains and there you are and everyone's like, oh my God, yes, there she is. She's about to perform and let the stage have it. Versus on drag and online, it's everything's so quiet. All you is just yourself and a speaker mm. and your phone. Right. You know, and then um, I, I was doing it and then I was just like, I can't do this anymore. It, it, it's just not the same. Whatsoever. Especially because you're a real dancer. You yeah. know, you, you'll you move, you do a dip, you twirl, you spin. Mm -hmm. It's hard to really do that same thing yeah. and that same vibe just in that Instagram up and down. Yeah, it, you, can't do, you can't do much. Much at all. <laughs> oh, thanks, Adam. The loving <laughs> digital drag. <laughs> okay. Look up. Valentina, it's her, Valentina. Um, so you and Valentina performed with Talia at the forum, right? Yeah, we did. She was, a, she actually reached out to me 
and asked me to, uh, that she had something to talk to me about. And she called me and she was, hey, we have a gig to the Hortalia. Uh, just don't say anything. It's up, you know, uh, uh, just keep it between us. I'm like, cool. And yeah, that bitch got me that gig to work with her. Now, is she, uh, is Talia one of your, uh, like a, a favorite of yours? Yes. I, I can up, imagine. I grew up watching her, her novelas. Right. As a kid, you know, I was a little girl watching her novelas and stuff. And I, 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 I even performed a couple of her songs. I have a couple of mixes from Talia that I performed too. And to perform with her on stage, it was just like mind blowing. I was just like, what the fuck am I doing here with this like girl like that I look up to growing up? Mm -hmm. and, and so what was that moment like? You get there, you're, you and Valentina are in the same dressing room. You're both like, girl, can you believe this? Yeah, the, well, the first day we didn't rehearse with her. We just did it on our own. And um, the second time we practiced, we rehearsed, uh, Talia came in and she, her and Valentina are very close friends. They get along very well. Like they had a whole kiki going and everything. And I was gagged. I was literally like <laughs> standing in front of her, like, oh my God, you are beautiful. And she's a tiny little woman just doing her thing. And, and she's a sweetheart. And she cusses a lot in Spanish, which mm. is everything to me. Because <laughs> I love when people cuss, uh, um, cuss in Spanish. It's so funny. Hello, chill. 